Road. Not on Bear Creek Road, but on the other side. Good evening. On Rosanil. Good evening, Tam. How you doing? Dan, you all right over there? Good. You're doing good. All right. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna get started here. Thank you for watching tonight and and on Facebook Live and for being here. And uh, we have a uh, guest with us tonight, and uh, her name is Leslie Krause. Is that did I get that yes, right? Yes, you did. Leslie Krause, <laughs> and uh, so we are anticipating uh, being able to hear uh, from her and her and what she does. She, uh, we're going to be talking tonight about emotional healing, which is uh, something that has to happen a lot in this in this country, and um, so we. Uh, we're going to get into that and, and find out who this young lady is and what she does and, and uh, how, how she got into uh, this type of ministry. But uh, Sister Pam's going to read the word and pray, and then we're going to jump right into it. Okay. Father, we, we are so grateful for this time together. I, I thank you, Lord, that you do have, uh, you have healing for us, and I'm so grateful for that. I thank you, Jesus, that you... You took those stripes in your body for our physical healing, but you also took on everything that we need that needed to be taken on so that we could have that emotional healing as well. I ask, Lord, tonight as we uh, talk about this, that there would even be freedom that comes to those who are listening. And, and Lord, just help us to really understand what it is that you're trying to get across to us. Ask that you would uh, settle down upon uh, Leslie, and as she speaks, I, I just ask that it would be like it's coming straight from your throne. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, the verse that I picked out is uh, John 8, 36. It says, so if the Son liberates you, makes you free men, then you are really and unquestionably free. I love that. Yeah, I do too. So, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I grew up right here in Branson, Missouri, um, okay. on the farm that I live on now. <laughs> so, it's neat. I, I grew up here, and then I left, and I went to Colorado. And um, I graduated from Evangel University with a biblical studies degree. And then the Lord led me out to Colorado Springs, um, and I was just struggling with some anger issues, and it was a family trend of ours. And my mom said, you know, I was talking to her about it one night, and she said, you know, I went through this ministry that was really helpful, and I have no idea where they're based, but I recommend them. And she recommended Bill and Janet Suddeth. And so I looked up their ministry, and they just happened to be in Colorado Springs, where I was living. Wow. And so, I know, I went there, and I was completely broke. And so I thought, well, I, w I can't pay for the session, so I'll volunteer my time. And I joined their team, and I began to learn deliverance ministry. Um, but for my session, I actually never went through the deliverance part. I sat with Janet, and we went through inner healing. Um, and, and then because I received enough inner healing, I didn't need to, the deliverance part. Um, and so it just brought some breakthroughs in my life that I didn't realize. Um, so I served with them for a couple years. Um, and then I met my husband and I moved out to Col uh, California in the Central Coast Valley. And they didn't have a deliverance ministry out there that I knew of, but I landed in the backyard of Santa Maria where the healing rooms are with Rick and Lori Taylor. And I just loved, it was a completely different style. Um, we did physical healing, it was the healing room. So they prayed for healing, but we also found ourselves doing a lot of inner healing as well. Mm -hmm. So um, when I moved back here um, with my family, the Lord just began to, I mean, I never stopped doing it, you know, but the Lord began to really thread them together and uh, I began to search out some certifications in it. Um, I went and I trained in Sozo for a while and I loved it. Um, but a lot of the tools that they use were actually rooted in Global Awakening and Randy Clark's ministry. And so always interested in the background of the tools and who created them, I, I found myself in Global Awakening. And so I'm still... Um, Redeeming Freedom is a member, we're one of their network members, and uh, I'm still taking classes and doing my ordination through them, so 
That's yeah. kind of my story. Yeah, the emotional healing, it's, it's a hybrid between, it, it takes inner healing and deliverance and it really puts them together. And so um, it's a really beautiful ministry. It's really impactful for people and I, I love it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I had one of my questions is how did you get started in Redeeming Free? Is this like your own ministry, Redeeming Free? Yeah, is I that... founded it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay, so. I took my back, and I didn't even realize when I was with Bill and Janet that, um, that that was a thing in their church. They were in Dutch Sheets Church, and I didn't even know who he was. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm looking back and I'm just thinking, oh my goodness, where was I? You know, but God just had me right there. And so I got to sit under a lot of really great teachers and rub shoulders with Becca Greenwood and, you know, the Wagners. And it was just wow. an incredible season. And I, I really didn't understand what the Lord had me under at that time. Um, but he planted seeds in my heart that grew. Well, yeah. It's interesting. I I actually lived in Colorado Springs for a while, too, and my husband was in the military at the time, and so I remember that's where I realized he, God had called me to intercession, so, uh, so it's like that was it's kind of a neat area, isn't it? It really is. There's a lot of amazing ministries out there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you find a ministries cluster. Yes. Yes. Once, once there's a breakthrough in an area, mm -hmm. then uh, ministries start clustering there. And that's exactly what's happening in Branson now. Yes, I agree. Yeah, there's been breakthroughs, so now ministries are starting to, to uh, cluster here. And uh, I know you believe in healing because I'm, tr I'm looking at that small print Bible you have, and I think that, that, that has got to be, how, how could you read that? <laughs> I've got a large print, large print Bible, and I can't see that. She's not in her 60s yet. <laughs> this one's easy to carry in my purse. It's skinny. <laughs> yeah, so you, have, you, you mentioned something, and uh, I'll let Pam get back into the interview here in a minute, but um, one of the things that has always been apparent to me, and we've really not moved into until I, what I'm hearing you say is that a lot of physical healing is rooted in emotion, in emotional damage. And spiritual. And, uh, yeah. I've seen a lot of people that uh, uh, couldn't get healed until they got uh, their uh, soul straightened out and healed up. Right. And this is my concept, the, the pain in a person's soul manifests itself physically. You know, I don't know if, that, if you see that or all the time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we see that all the time. Especially when they can't explain, they, they really can't find out what's wrong with them. Mm -hmm. But they're in pain all the time, and there's all kind. They're constant infirmities and stuff. Yes. So, uh, you you've been seeing uh, deliverance and healing, emotional healing, uh, kind of together. Right. Okay. So when when do have you seen? Uh, the reason I, I ask that is because I've seen a lot of people set free from demonic uh, powers and, uh, and still struggle uh, terribly. And so I've been saying for a long time that deliverance is not an end in itself. There has to be discipleship. But uh, you're, you're taking it a little bit further and saying, you know, discipleship has to bring uh, healing and... and uh, uh, you know, get rid of the trauma yeah. in a person's life. So, yeah, that I, I like where you're going there. Yeah, it's interesting. We see so many, and the Lord, the Lord will highlight, you know, an illness to me, mm -hmm. and he'll, I'll ask them, hey, do you struggle with this? And we actually just had a young lady um, two Sundays ago. You know, she came back for healing, and we were praying for her, and she said, I have scoliosis. And from my training and my understanding, a lot of times, you know, in the, in the life of a family, God designed our relationships to have a backbone and a structure of unconditional love. And when, when we grow up in a home of conditional love that can warp and twist 
the structure of our relationships and, and the backbone of our support and our relationships. And what wow. happens is it there's like this parallel manifestation in the body mm-hmm. where we actually can sometimes see scoliosis take place. And so before I prayed for her, I said, you know, is it, is it possible you grew up in a home with conditional love? And she just wept. Like she went from feeling the Holy Spirit to just broken and sobbing. And I said, who do you need to forgive? And she said, both of my parents. And so we led her through a prayer of forgiveness. And I led her through a prayer, you know, just receiving God's unconditional love and just affirming who she is in Christ and that she was chosen before the foundation of the world. And he called her by name before she even knew him. Mm -hmm. And that there's nothing she can do to change his love for her or not do. And so when she received that, we began to pray for her. And I remember putting my hand on her back and I could feel the snapping and the popping of the joints. Now I couldn't feel it moving. And I thought, I'm not going to tell her what I'm feeling. I'm just going to bless what God's doing right now. And hours after the service, she messaged me telling me that she could physically feel her spine moving through the entire service. And now she can put both hands flat on the floor without any pain Mm -hmm. for the first time she can bend over. And she's a young woman, you know, she's in her early 30s and she's been in extreme pain for years. Um, But I just don't think sometimes those breakthroughs don't happen until we correct you know, the, the foundational belief system and the pain that's mm-hmm. there. And then healing happens really easily. Now, it's not to say that it's, you know, it's always this, it's always the case. It's certainly a case by case, but we see right. a lot of link um, and correlation between the two. Yeah. yeah. Wow. There's, there's no way to just say this condition is this. this. Right. Every person uh, is, we, we have to have Holy Spirit help us because... Uh, what ha- what was going on with one person and that condition, the next person, it does it just doesn't work. We are so, um, I don't know what you call it, complex mm-hmm. uh, that everything doesn't work for everybody. <laughs> it's true, but there are some things that are correlated. When when we start seeing patterns, mm-hmm. you know, and then the Lord will highlight that to us, and, and we let, we've learned to really listen to His voice and His yeah. direction. So when you pull up inner healing or emotional healing on the internet, most of the time, most of the places it takes you to is new age things. That's true. Inner healing, yeah. We used the term emotional healing because that is the certification that we hold under okay. Global Awakening. Yeah. Um, and it better describes what we do with the, the blending of deliverance and, and inner healing. But I also found, especially in, in our area, that inner healing is confusing. People don't know what we're talking about. Right. But emotional healing, they're like, oh, yes, forgiveness. I need that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and so I'm, it's just more intuitive. So sure. it's, yeah, it's both. So in your, from your background and everything, I know the answer, but in, in your ministry, the Word of God is your foundation for everything you do. Everything. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to clarify that for everybody listening. I do. And, and there is, um, in different, different streams of this, it's, it's tempting for ministers, I think, to say, well, that therapy works well. You know, I'm going to bring that in. And I actually have been very um, solid and, and firm with our team that we're not going to, you know, because we have life coaches on our team, we have licensed counselors on our team, we have licensed pastors. And so um, it's interesting, like they all come with, you know, their different educational backgrounds, but I've made it very clear, like at a Redeeming Freedom, we're doing biblically-based gospel tools only. Mm-hmm. And the That's gospel great. is where it starts and ends for me. And so I believe that everything that we need is presented and purchased in the finished work of Christ. And so we don't need to add to it. I'm not saying that those therapies aren't good, but for redeeming freedom, every tool has to be based biblically. And and that's where we start. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Start and end. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Let's see here. You've, you've answered a lot of the questions already that I had here. Um, I, I was going to ask you, can you give us some more, uh, more examples of 
some of those successful healings that you've seen or? Yeah, um, let's see, a little over a year ago, we had a young woman come in, she was in her late 20s, and it struck me because she had bags under her eyes that were almost a half inch thick. Wow. And she just, she just looked so tired. Um, anyway, she comes into the session and she, she had, she just wept. She wept through the session, unlike anyone I've ever seen. And, and normally when you weep like that, you walk away puffy, <laughs> but not her. <laughs> When she walked away, and actually um, what she dealt with was performance. She dealt with a performance-based love and, as well. Um, <clears throat> when she left, the bags were completely gone. Wow. And the Lord had relieved her burdens. She, we had helped her give all those weights and all those burdens to the Lord, and she cried for you know the whole hour but but when she left the bags were gone and her entire countenance was changed um and that i remember just it was flooring to me to see that kind of radical change on her face um but then also she didn't even have this on her paperwork but i you know after they spend an hour and a half in the lord's presence and they know how good he is i just have to ask like is there anything we can pray for healing for you know yeah anything at all and they're just like well I do have carp you know and she's like well I do have carpal tunnel in my left hand and I began you know as our team laid our hands um on her arm and we began to pray for her I heard the Lord say this is a performance spirit and so I shifted the way I began to pray and I just said I take authority in Jesus name over the spirit of performance and I command you to leave her and she felt this, she said, I'm feeling this really strange feeling in my arm. And then she said, all of a sudden, it was just gone. Wow. And from that point forward, she did not have any carpal tunnel at all. And she used to, her job was to sit at a desk and work. Um, and she, she did have a follow-up appointment a month later. And she didn't have a single pain from carpal tunnel until the mo morning she walked in. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, ah. This was God allowing you to step into your authority, you know? Uh -huh. And so we taught her, instead of relying on us, we That's taught good. her how to take her authority in, that Jesus has given her and lay her own hand on her arm and command it to leave in Jesus' name. And it did. Wow. And she was yeah. just and so empowered <laughs> yeah. and excited, you know, that God would do that through her as well. And so that's another part of our ministry, actually, is we're teaching people how to hold their ground, how to keep their healing, how to you know, stand in the authority of Christ and not just rely, rely, rely on others. And the body That's of Christ okay. is there, you know, for right. support. But we also need to be teaching them how to rise up in their own strength in the Lord and stand. Yeah. I, lo yeah. I like that because then that teaches them, you go to Jesus. You, do, you can't rely on a human being. Right. You can't rely on everybody else. So yeah. uh, you have to, yeah, but yeah. we're there for them. Yes. Yeah, I've kind of developed a lazy uh, approach this thing we want somebody else to have faith and do it but if we can't carry it we're gonna we'll lose it if those people aren't around it, and that's one reason why we see a lot of people lose their deliverances yeah. and lose their healings and lose their you know their emotional ground that they gained because mm -hmm. they know how to clean help you know they'll help someone clean house but they don't know how to be the strong man at the door that says no you can't come back right yeah so. that's important yeah, we had a, a pastor and his wife here, uh, was it last week, week before, last week, uh, Rusty and Belinda from the Glory Barn. And uh, here recently, they, they went through a real healing uh, and in their uh, marriage. Mm -hmm. And uh, she'd been suffering with joint pain and, you know, uh, just, uh, I forget what all, anyway, she, yep. she, I had back pain, joint pain, just, and um, after they, after they, they really dove into it themselves. They, they sozoed their marriage, is what yeah. they said. <laughs> and, uh, and when that was over with, uh, she lost 55 pounds without going on a diet, and all of the pain left her joints. And, and uh, she, she's like a new person, you know. 
Yeah. And it was the it was the it was the pain she was carrying in her soul, and that toxicity that that developed from that, and it was poison in her body. Mm -hmm. And since wow. she went through that, you know, she has just been getting. Uh, healthier and healthier That's and healthier. That's amazing. I love that. I yeah. mean, God heals the whole person. He didn't create us. Um, the you know the the Western mindset tries to separate the mind from the body, from the soul, mm -hmm. from the spirit, but. Um, that's not the Hebrew teaching, and that's not the way God created us. He simply created us as a person. Mm -hmm. And as a person, we have, you know, we have our body, and we have our spirit, and we have our soul, and they all three work together. Right. And when one, one is struggling, the other two kick in to help. And it's, and you know, if, if your soul is struggling, then your body is going to carry the weight. And that's why... Um, I think it's Third John 1 actually says, you know, I pray that you would prosper in your health even as you prosper in your soul. Mm -hmm. They're so tightly connected. Right. Yeah, it's important that we minister to the whole person. Yeah. What are some of the uh, scriptures that you use uh, on emotional healing, uh, foundational scriptures? What are my favorites? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, Tammy probably hears them all the time. <laughs> Um, one of the foundational scriptures I would say is, and I opened my Bible up to it, is Hebrews 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Right. Yeah, that's one of our hallmark verses. And then one of the chapters that we almost always go to is Isaiah 61. Yeah, those, those two um, and so many scriptures feed into it. Another one that we stand on a lot is, um, I believe it's 2 Corinthians 10. Um, you know, as we, we have divine, divine power to tear down strongholds and yeah. arguments that set themselves up against Christ. And right. that's, a, that's a big part of emotional healing, mm -hmm. um, really, and deliverance. It's part of the renewal of the mind. You know, you have to right. take authority over the strongholds, the arguments, the philosophies that set themselves up against who Christ says you are, and you have to make them obedient to Christ. And so you have to kind of, you really have to police your thoughts if you're going to hang on to this thing. Right. That's true. What do you... What have you seen in that? We, uh, we see a lot of, of people that uh, are so dominated by uh, their thinking. You know, we call it overthinking. Uh, but uh, they have a hard time accepting the word because in their, and they feel in their mind their thoughts are so true to them. Yeah. Um, you, do you see that? That's one of the underlying... Undergird, I, the undergirding really is the belief system. Mm -hmm. And that is what is going to be the framework for everything that you think, everything that you do, everything that motivates you, every relationship that you interact with, every thought, you know, mm -hmm. words that you speak, it's rooted in that belief system. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember the Lord told me, teaching changes minds but it's the revelatory and personal encounters with the Holy Spirit that change hearts. Mm -hmm. And good. so what happens is people experience, they have experiences that are not God's truth. And the experience mm -hmm. is real. It's mm -hmm. a reality for them. You know, but just because somebody treats you like you don't have worth does not mean that you are without worth. Right. And so yes. there's a difference between reality and what you've experienced and God's truth. Mm -hmm. And so the Holy Spirit will come and he, he's really the one that can break through those barriers of their heart and show mm -hmm. them the truth. Um, Romans 5, 5 is another scripture that I absolutely love, you mm -hmm. know, but hope does not put us to shame because the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Right. And yes. when that happens, it's, it's a heart thing. It's not a head thing. Yeah. Yes. Um, the heart experiences and encounters, you know, the living God, and then we renew the mind. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's how we can stop the, the ruminating and the mm -hmm. circle thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, talk, I talk about it being, you know, the, fact, the facts say this is the facts. The other side of your brain says, but I don't feel good about that. Mm -hmm. This is the facts. I don't feel good about that. So you, 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 you can't park it. Right. It's just like it, it, you cycle. Yes. Um, 
it takes time, and this is one of the questions you have. I, I'm sorry if I'm jumping ahead, but nope, one of nope, the questions right you have is, you know, is, are, is there any times it doesn't work? And I would say it doesn't work when they don't do their homework. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the homework, and we don't give them hard homework, but what we'll do during a session is we will have someone writing down all the truths that are released during the session, the verses that back up their healing and, you know, the truth that they've received. And then it's, I'll type that up for them and I'll send that to them in an email. And it's their job to print it out and keep it in their Bible so that they're constantly daily renewing their mind with God's word and God's yes. truth. And yes. when they recognize the strange voice that says, I'm not worthy, you know, they can now recognize that as a foreign thought and a foreign voice and shut that down. But it does take practice and it does take work. And it's the transforming yeah. and by the renewal of your mind. Yeah. And, and that is a huge part. And then they've got to speak that word back. Because yes. I, I've seen that before too, you know, even with myself, that I will be going one direction with, but I think, and I think, okay, no, I know that's not true, but here's what the word says. And it'll come back again, and here's what the word says. And so yes. I speak it back out because it's, I need to hear it for myself, but also, you know, whatever spirit is attacking me yes. needs to hear me saying it as well. They do. And, and, and then, I mean, that's where you, you're using the sword of the Spirit, you yes. know, which is the Word of God. So, yes. Yeah. You said one of my favorite words, practice. Practice. If, if we're not willing to practice, right. you know, yeah. we, especially in those Pentecostal charismatic churches, uh, we, we want instant downloads. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we want gifts and instant downloads and zaps and... You know, we love the event, but not the the preparation for the event. Yeah. Um, and so, even operating the gifts of the spirit, take you have to practice that. Yeah. And and you have to practice it until you understand it. You know it. You know the voice of God. And so, uh, when 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 you have people come in that uh, you can see that they're not going to apply themselves, how do you how do you approach that? Sorry, say that again. <laughs> <laughs> Just the last little bit. <laughs> when you have people come in, you know, sometimes when people are wanting help, they come to you, and from the very beginning, you see they're not going to apply themselves to this. Mm. They want you to help them, but they're not going to apply themselves to it. Now, compassion and, and the uh, demand of our anointing uh, tells us that we're supposed to invest in these people. Yeah. How do you... How do you handle that when people, when, when, how do you handle that fight inside yeah. of you when you're wanting to help these people, you feel compelled to help them, uh, but you can see that they're, they're not going to apply themselves. How do you, how do you handle those situations? You know, most ministries um, that operate in this, especially when we're setting aside hours aside for a session and we have people coming in to mm -hmm. minister, um, they're, they request a fee, and we do the same thing. Okay. And so we have scholarships um, for those who need ministry but can't otherwise afford it, and, and we work with different churches to set up programs mm -hmm. for them. But honestly, without skin in the game, they don't care. Yeah. Once, right. once they get skin in the yeah. game, they've paid for it, and it has value to them. And so it's, you know, it's, it's honoring the worker who's yes. pouring in and I do believe that a worker is worth their wages but yes. then I also believe that for someone to value the appointment the time what they're receiving mm -hmm. um, they're willing to pay for it yeah. even if it's just a little bit and yeah. that that has helped curb that a little bit because yeah. um, early on in ministry I was seeing a lot of just last minute appointment cancellations and I'd have people driving an hour to be there you know and it was you're right. Like they come in and they're not committed, but when they've, when they've got skin in the game, it matters to them and it matters, matters enough for them to show up and for them to show out. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, that's what I was wanting to hear. Yeah. I I've want to apologize four, for it. I've got 45 <laughs> years of free ministry. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and it, it, you know, over the years I've noticed that, uh, matter of fact, I've got to the point when, when I'm trying to help somebody 
and I see that they're not going to apply themselves, mm. I usually stop and give them a speech about that, that, you know, I'm donating hours of my time to your life, and I'll yeah. never get these hours back. So if all you want is a therapist, it's going to be $160 an hour. At least. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> so, you know, at that point, we, we find out what they really want to do. Yeah. So uh, I... I, I sound like a cynical old man, but uh, you've got a you've got a lot of people that that uh, that won't apply themselves, mm. that won't help, and then you've got attention hungry people right. that uh, they they are uh, approval addicts, mm -hmm. and so do you feel like uh, charging uh, weeds that out? I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. it does. People are serious. Um, they're serious about their emotional healing and their health by the time they get to us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, we do have some people that we've worked with, and they're a little more, um, I would say there's special cases where the Lord, you know, has put them on my heart. And mm -hmm. so I have a different relationship with them. Um, but a lot of a lot of times they'll just ask and say, "Hey, can you you know can you be praying for this? Can you mm -hmm. be praying for that?" And yeah. I'll say, "You know what? You pray for that, the way we taught you." <laughs> yeah. And I'll bless what you're praying. I'll yeah. come into agreement it. with it. That's it. <laughs> That's and good. tell me how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Call me back in a week and tell me what yeah. what's the you know what's the I Lord doing. <laughs> if they wanted to come see me again, I'd say, "Okay, that'll be fine." But what did you do with what we talked about yeah. last time? Yeah. And if they can't tell me anything they did, I'll, I'll say, well, go, you know, go practice what we talked about last time. Then I'll, I'll and I have had that conversation. I'll say, you know, they want to schedule another session and I'll say, okay, well, how, you know, have you been in your paperwork? Did you print out your paperwork? Mm -hmm. Have you been using it? And they'll say, oh no, I never really did that. And yeah. I'll be like, okay, well, let's hold off on scheduling this appointment and then you print out that paperwork and you start really getting God's truth and God's word and, and see where you're at after mm -hmm. that and give us a call. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I'm just checking to see how seasoned you are. <laughs> right. How jaded am I? <laughs> no. You've been you've been around this mountain a few times. I've watched I you know you can learn a lot by watching different ministries in the way that they function mm. and um and I do see I think honor in the kingdom of God is so important. And not only do I want to honor the person who's coming in um, and, and respect their dignity, but I want to honor our team mm -hmm. as well. They're coming in and they're volunteering their time. And I think they're worth honoring as well. And so there is a balance that we have to um, strike there. Um, I agree. There's a lot of people who... You know, even when it comes to, um, you know, they hear these testimonies and they get changed. You know, they're just like, oh, my goodness. Or they'll see, so they'll see a healing take place at church. You know, they'll go to this revival meeting mm -hmm. and God was there. and Or this amazing worship session. And they're just like, oh, this is great. But then they walk away and they're not changed by it. All right. They love the experience, but they mm -hmm. don't allow the experience to actually change what they're doing right. and that's why you know we'll take some time at the end of each appointment to really talk to them about renewing the mind and, and journaling with the Lord and walking this thing out mm -hmm. and just let them know that hey we unpacked some things today and there might be some more things that come up the Lord brings to your mind about forgiveness and you know here's a here's some practical ways you can walk in forgiveness and practice this and um, we'll just give them some tangible tools they can use to walk in forgiveness or walk in, you know, walk their way through journaling different mm -hmm. things. Um, and just tell them, let this, let this renewing your mind process, mm -hmm. like this is really where things get, they gel together and they solidify. Um, it's, I think it's James, James 1 says that, um, I'm just going to read it because it's so great. Um, be doers of the word and not hearers only, right. deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in the mirror and then turns around and goes away and forgets. Huh? Am I Did it die? Did it die? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
anyone who looks at themselves intently in the mirror and sees their natural face, but then they turn around and they, they forget what they look like. And that is what it's like for someone to go and they have an encounter with the Lord or they hear this powerful testimony or they go through a session and then they don't practice it. They have completely forgotten who God said that they are. And so we want to make sure, you know, we're going to go extra measures to make sure that they're renewing their mind and practicing what they receive. Yeah, I like the way you turn that because for years uh, that portion of Scripture was preached on of looking in the Word and seeing how sinful you are, how bad you are. But when we, we got that, matter of fact, as Pastor Rob preached on this the first time, uh, he flipped that around. He said, it says when you look into the Word and... Uh, he said, you see what God's called you to be. You see what God made you to be. And then you turn around and walk away and you forget that. Right. And you go back to the familiar, which in, in my experience and, and in my mind, familiarity is one of the greatest enemies that we have because it'll coax you, coax you right back into your uh, old state. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're programmed. We, we, uh, the things that are familiar, we we tend to migrate back to. And so changing that familiarity, and like you're saying tonight, you've got to constantly look into the Word of God, constantly uh, uh, renew your mind and practice that in order to get a whole new view of who you are, what you are. And uh, so what is, um, I, I know you deal with people that have depression. Yeah. Have you have you found some some uh, key foundational things that that uh, that is behind depression? You know, it's normally it's different for everyone. Okay. Um, I will say that there is a spirit of heaviness that does yeah. a really good job. Yeah. At messing with your chemicals. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um. And when, you know, a spirit of heaviness usually enters when an event happens mm -hmm. and they're grieving it and they don't get through all the stages of grief and they don't shake it off. And they grieve a worldly grief mm -hmm. because a righteous grief draws you near to the Lord. You know, it draws you into repentance or it draws you near to the Lord or forgiveness. But a worldly grief, just you sit in it. And then you, you sit in the condemnation, you sit in the shame, you sit in the guilt, you sit in the sadness, the hopelessness. And, and when they stay there, there's an open door that's, you know, there's a door that's open to the spirit of heaviness and that thing moves in and it camps out. And then they start seeing, you know, chemical imbalances and they start seeing all these different things. Um, so when we, when the Holy Spirit, he always knows, he always knows their heart. And so instead of, you know, being a, I, if I were a counselor, then I would have to dig and, you know, go through all these life stages and history of your life. But the Holy Spirit knows. He knows the exact place that thing entered. And so we'll just ask, you know, Lord, which memory do you want to heal? And he'll bring it up. He's so faithful. He'll take them straight there. And he never opens something that they're not willing, you know, that they're not ready to face. But he'll bring them to that moment, and when they walk through forgiveness, and they process the emotions that happened there, and they experience God's presence in that moment, and then this is where the deliverance part comes in, you know, we'll kick out the spirit of heaviness, and we'll have them repent for coming into agreement with it, and allowing it a place in their heart. Um, once they repent and renounce heaviness, and we remove that, and then the Holy Spirit comes and fills their heart. He pours into their heart the hope and the love of Christ. Um, joy comes with that. Joy comes in right. the morning, you know, and that's, that's how the gospel works. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. And we, see, we do see people change, um, and that heaviness, kind of like that young lady that came in with the bags and the heaviness, and she just wept for an hour and a half, um, for, or for the full hour. She just wept. And, she but when she left, she was completely puffy. changed. She was, yeah, she wasn't even puffy. I'm like, this is, this is different. <laughs> yeah, this is not natural. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's interesting. Um, it's interesting to see the way we have, you know, there's a book, I forget who it's by, but it's called the Respectable Sins. And I think there's some respectable illnesses that we put up with in the church that we don't need to yes. be putting up with. 
Yeah. Not a, yeah, it's on. Is it? Yeah, it's on. Oh, yeah. it is. Okay. okay. There it is. <laughs> Yay. So, um, well, that's interesting. Yeah, they're ex yeah, respectable illnesses, and yeah, I can see that. And, yeah, um, say that again. I respectable illnesses? I said yeah. there's respectable sins that we tend to put up with in mm -hmm. the church, but there's also some respectable illnesses, anxiety, depression, yeah. things like that. But that's those a, are spirits that we wrestle yeah. with. We don't yeah. wrestle against flesh and blood. Those, those uh, two statements shouldn't go together, respectable, respectable and sin. Right, and right. Respectable and, yeah. There's a lot of things that we put, we, we feel like are normal. Yeah. And um, so once we get the revelation that they're not, then that, that puts, uh, that we either, we have to make a choice. We either, we either apply the word of God to that and, and, and pursue change, or we uh, accept the, the shame and condemnation uh, because truth has now come. Yeah. And so once truth comes, the Bible, you know, Jesus said, if truth hadn't, hadn't come, you, you wouldn't, there would be no sin. Right. right. But once truth comes and, and it's revealed, and so that, uh, that puts us in a position where we, we have to do something about it. Yeah. So now, I do want to make a clarification. It's not always, it's not always, you know, rooted in spirit. Sometimes it, it really is just rooted in a broken world that we live in and illnesses come through that. And that's an important balance. I think we can right. go to the extreme where we think it's, you know, depression is always caused by a spirit. And, and that's not, I want to make sure that I'm not coming across that way because I don't believe that. Um, I think there, you know, there's, there's things that you inherit and there's things that come down genetically and, and God, but what I love about the Lord is that he can heal it all. Yeah. Yes. There's nothing he can't heal. Right. It doesn't really matter how it came, whether it came by nature or whether it came by the enemy or whether it came through an experience. Um, God has the power to heal it all. And I just don't feel like anything's off the table when it comes, you know, when someone comes in the office because God's got the power to heal. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus did. He ministered in different ways. Sometimes mm -hmm. he yes. commanded the unclean spirit to come out when somebody had an infirmity. And yeah. other times he just uh, touched them and they were healed. And right. Raised them up, you know, if they, they were dead. And he'd just say, okay, get up. You mm -hmm. know, he didn't deal with any uh, cause or anything. He just... Uh, healed them, but there were times that he would command unclean. The woman that's been over, you know, uh, he commanded unclean spirit to leave, and she was able to stand up. Right. You know, so uh, they, there's different types and and the different mm -hmm. blind men that that he healed. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, one I heard uh, I was in a conference here recently, and Samuel Samuel Rodriguez was preaching, and he he said God uh, Jesus made mud and put in the guy's eyes because he'd been blind since birth and then he spit in the mud and he said I always wondered why and he said then all of a sudden I realized that it was the mud was what the eye was made of hmm. and then Jesus added his DNA wow wow that's beautiful <laughs> yeah well, so he yeah. had the the building materials and then he added the DNA of of God to it you know, because most of us think, you know, spitting is just a, not an acceptable thing. Uh, I haven't, you know, I haven't tried to spit on anybody in the church yet. Well, I do, but it's, it's the preaching zone. It's the you people know, the, who sit on the front row. <laughs> it's the, the spit zone out here. Yeah. So. That's funny. Yeah. It's true. I mean, you know, for the paralytic, he was, he was, he had amazing friends, by the way. I want friends like the paralytic. Um, they tore the roof off a building to lower him down, and Jesus' answer to him was, your sins are forgiven. Yeah. Yes. Um, go and sin no more. But then with, um, I think it was Bartimaeus who was sitting at the gate, you know, they said, who, um, who sinned, this man or his parents? And I think it's interesting. I actually looked up Bartimaeus' name mm -hmm. in, um, in Hebrew, and it says, son of the unclean. Son of what? Son of the unclean. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. And it, Jesus was dealing with the cultural expectation that somebody must be ill because there was sin in their life or there was some kind of unclean spirit there. Yes. And he, he was very clear. No one sinned. 
Yes. You know, it's not his fault. And so he was actually redeeming his identity as well as correcting a cultural expectation that we can just throw everything in one bucket. And we have to be very careful not to do that as ministers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know, you true. approach this uh, differently than a lot of, a lot of people I've been around. Um, I've, I've been around a lot of people that's in deliverance, healing ministries, and uh, they seem to carry it like a weight. And it, it's a responsibility, it's a weight. It's, and you seem to be happy about it. You know? Yeah, I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's, it's fun. I realize I can't heal a soul. <laughs> yeah. It's Jesus who does it through us. And um, I remember one of my appointments recently, I don't know, it was a couple months ago, she came in and I just thought, Lord, that was the worst appointment I've ever done. Like the worst one. I don't, I wonder if I should refund her. <laughs> like, I, I just was off. I was just off and I just felt like she did not um, get a focus, Leslie, that, that, you know, and then the Lord, she actually emailed me the very next morning and she's like, oh my goodness. God did so much in my heart yesterday. I woke up for the first time not feeling sick to my stomach because I wasn't anxious anymore. Wow. Wow. And she goes, and then my daughter came bouncing in and I heard the word that the Lord spoke over her and I just took so much joy in my daughter for the first time in weeks. And she's like, I just want to let you know that you know, what you do is so great. And I'm just like, oh, it's not me. <laughs> like, God did all that because I don't know where I was that night. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, God does it. God does the healing. He's the one yeah. that does the encounters. And he's the only one that can change hearts and bring that revelation to someone's heart. And so um, the more I yield to him, the better it is. I just try to get out of the way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I, I was in a heal. Uh, took part in a, a healing meeting here recently at a church, and um, before we prayed for people, I started talking about how I started saying Jesus is so excited about what's about to ha what's about to happen to you. You know, he's it, it's not like you're saying, "Please, Jesus," you know, and he's saying, oh, "I don't know if I want to do this," you know, "Don't know if you deserve it," mm -hmm. you know. Right. But I said he is so excited about the angels are celebrating because. Yeah about you're about to receive what what cost jesus everything right and he deserves this and so he's getting really excited about this you know and that's a totally different uh viewpoint than a lot of uh churches a lot of ministries approach this with they, they approach it with oh god if you don't do this i'm gonna look bad you know? yeah <laughs> if if you don't if you don't heal i'm gonna pray for them if you don't heal you know then they'll be disappointed and yeah we're always we're always more afraid of of the disappointment than we are anticipating uh what god's going to do yeah. and and i think that has a lot to do with with what we're, you're talking about mindset yeah people do have their expectations they come in um it depends on where they're at with the Lord and how desperate they are. And um, if I see some, if I see an expectation that, um, like I had a lady say, she 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 was coming for a miracle, for um, I don't know what what did she have? She had some kind of chronic illness, and she was like, "I paid for this miracle," and I'm like, "Uh." <laughs> <laughs> I <paid for> <laughs> I'm like, no, <laughs> that would be spiritual prostitution. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't do that. And I don't, I'm not as a miracle worker you can pay and get, you know, I'm not a venting machine and neither is the Lord. So yeah. we're going to be doing what he wants to do tonight. And I can, I, I can honestly say it's going to be great. I don't know what he's going to do tonight in you, but it's going to be amazing. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you can't pay me for a prophecy. You can't pay me for this and you yeah. can't pay me for that and get a vending machine that's not how god works and yeah. that's not right. how the gift of gifts work either through right. us and that's so right. That's right. yeah i i try to get out of the way as much as i can yeah well that's that's the uh balance beam that you walk on between uh charging people and and them right and then you know so they have skin in the game you know mm -hmm. like you say uh they take it you know, they they see it as being important valuable and then, uh, and then them realizing that they didn't pay for the, what they're, you know, to get God to do it. Yeah, well, and it goes back to that, I just want this snap 
easy, oh, yeah. quick miracle that I don't have to work yeah. for. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, you know, I remember what it was. It was PTSD. And we do work with PTSD. Mm. Um, and God is so, he works through that so beautifully, but it is a process. Mm -hmm. And um, she was very jaded with, the therapies and and she had found herself under a therapist who was into the occult and so she was just worn out and um when we got on the phone call i'm like i'm happy to refund this appointment if that was somehow the impression i'm not sure how she got referred to us but um she was feisty up front and then she's like well i'm just here for god and then, <laughs> and then she went through her appointment and had an incredible appointment awesome. yeah yeah, and I asked her after two appointments, you know, how are you doing from where you were when you started with PTSD? How are you now? And she said that she had um, become 70% changed. God had saved her 70% and, and she wow. even had um, her vision back. Uh, wow. And so it was really neat. Like God was not yes. finished with her healing, but at least two appointments and she was 70% better. She was wow. sleeping better. She was, wow. um, she had clarity of thought, you know, she, the flashbacks were gone. I mean, a lot of the mm -hmm. things that people struggle with, with PTSD, but Jesus went through trauma to heal ours. Right. Wow. And so yeah, I right. don't feel like PTSD is beyond him either. Right. Right. Um, but we, we don't pay for miracles and we don't pay for, you know, God's not a vending machine and we have to make sure that we, people understand that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, whether you have an answer for this or not, I don't, it's fine. Um, but I've been praying for, uh, for us to begin to see uh, real movement uh, of healing in the uh, psychological mm. area. Uh, because I've I've not seen much of that, yeah. And uh, you know, like I said, I've been doing this 45 years. That's a long time, and I've not seen a whole lot of healing in psychological areas. It seems like we get to a certain point, but uh, uh, things like uh, uh, bipolar disorder, uh, you know, borderline uh, personality. personality personality disorder, schizophrenia, huh? Schizophrenia. schizophrenia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We used to have. Uh, there used to be a, a uh, care center just down the road here. And the people from that care center would come up here to church. And they would come a lot of times early. And they, were, they, all, they wanted to be here. They wanted to be here. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were people that wasn't able to care for themselves um, for whatever reason, you know, a lot of different reasons. And somebody asked them one time, why do you like coming here? And they said, because the voices stop while we're here. Yeah. So there's a there's there's a power there, mm -hmm. um, but have you been have you been seeing much uh, movement with that in your ministry? You know, it's interesting. The Lord goes through. It's like sometimes we'll go through this season where we get someone, you know, multiple personality come in, several mm -hmm. of them, and. It's, it's almost like the Lord is in, as a minister to ministers, I would say that whenever you see a pattern of depression coming in, or you see a pattern of, you know, the same sickness coming in, I would say that's the Lord inviting you in to learning to pray for this and pray for breakthrough and move into an authority in that it's like an invite. He's inviting you into a new realm of authority over this breakthrough here. And so when we see a pattern, I'll tell our team, hey, we've got this pattern happening, and I believe the Lord wants us to pray into this for breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he'll release anointings for specific diseases and for very specific causes. And, but that takes prayer, and that takes fasting and pressing in and an increase in faith. I would not say, I don't look at the mind like it's different than the liver. It's an organ. It's a part of our body. God designed it. He has authority over it. Right. right. And um, he, he died to give us the mind of Christ. He died and he yes. rose again to give us the mind of Christ. Right. And so I believe that's a part of our inheritance in him. Um, so I don't stop because I find out it's psychological. Right. It's not always demonic. Um, I think right. that's a danger that we get into. We start thinking that because the enemy is very good at counterfeiting a physical illness mm -hmm. that, um, or a mental illness, that it's always demonic, and it's not. Yeah. Yes. Um, 
I would say one of the red flags, though, when you're dealing with something demonic is when it starts moving around <laughs> or when it gets worse when we pray for it. You know, it's suddenly the pain right. increases. Yeah. Or like you said, you know, they come in here and the voices stop. Like those things aren't natural. That's mm -hmm. not rooted in a physical disorder. But um, and so those can be some pointers that I might not be dealing with just mental illness right now. But not mm -hmm. all mental illness is rooted in the demonic side. And so we have to be very careful about the way we love on these people and you know they've already they're already dealing with a broken system i don't believe that the mental health system um is perfect i mean no <laughs> none of our worldly systems are perfect and none of our you know even our spiritual systems oftentimes when we're working with people aren't perfect and so they're dealing with some broken systems they've experienced prejudice they're, and so we want to make sure that when we minister to mental illness we're always honoring them and we're always restoring dignity yeah. and and we're loving them well and then we're not putting boundaries on god's healing because the mind is every bit a part of the body as the foot or the liver or or the hand or the eye and so god can heal right and when we we you know we depend on his leading through that but um yeah, I would say that if, if when there's a season when I'm seeing the same thing coming in, I'm I'm cueing our intercessors in and our team in to pr start praying for breakthrough yeah. in that area. Yeah, ministering in in Rwanda after the uh, uh, genocide, genocide yeah. over there, and families are so traumatized. People yeah. are so traumatized. Um, we've actually seen people that didn't know who they were, didn't know where they're at. Yeah. Uh, we've actually seen them come to their right mind. Uh, through prayer and just laying hands on him, praying for him. We had one man that was just, just lost. He didn't know. And they brought him to the church we were holding a meeting in. And uh, uh, nobody could help him. And they brought him to this meeting because they'd heard that people was being touched there. And he didn't know who he was. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't know his name. He didn't know where he was from. He didn't, didn't know anything. And uh, we laid hands on him and prayed for him. And in a few minutes, he, you know, it, it all started, he began to know who he was and, and wow. be, all began to come back and, and his mind was restored. Yeah. And so that, that's a powerful thing. I found out here in America that a lot of, a lot of things uh, are not uh, spiritual and they're not even soulish. It's too much sugar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We, I've We've got with, our Starbucks Venti's going on. With, that's right. Or, or Andy's <laughs> yep. all the time. Yep. <laughs> but uh, people actually, uh, I've actually had people uh, change their diet and, a lot, and so a lot of the anger yes. and the symptoms will go away. Yes. And the reason is because their, their blood sugar is dropping so, far, so bad. You know, their, their body attacks it with insulin. Mm -hmm. And they don't have any protein in their body, so their, yeah. you know, their bloodstream all of a sudden is just out of sugar, mm -hmm. and that's what our body runs on. Uh, you know, everything we eat turns into sugars, but when you when you eat too much purified sugar, uh, it doesn't last. It it hits your bloodstream, and immediately it, yeah, it burns surges. up. Mm -hmm. And and so I've actually uh, found uh, uh, people getting help. Uh, just by getting them Changing to change their, their diet. diet. Diet is a huge part of it. And one of the things that we've been wanting to do with Redeeming Freedom is pair, you know, partner up with is, um, a godly nutritionist, you know, someone who's really strong in their faith and can walk people through the nutritional side of their health. Because if we're going to truly minister to the whole person, you're absolutely right. You know, a big part of it is... Um, caring for the vessel that God created for your ministry. And, you know, this, that's our body. Mm -hmm. And um, people forget, you know, they want to they wanna care for their spirit and they want to care for their soul, but they don't really care for their body as often as they should. And I think we need to have an equal value for the body and the vehicle that God gave us and realize that he wants it healthy and he wants it whole. And, and he wants that to be, you know, because that's the vessel he designed for us to move mm -hmm. in our identity and accomplish our call and our mission. Yeah. And so, you know, if we don't have that view of our body, yeah. we, can, we can treat our body 
really badly. And I've actually had people not experience healing, and I know this is gonna sound strange, but they will not experience healing until they actually repent for the way that they've treated their body. They repent, you know, for the way they've hated their body. Yeah. And we've had to even break word curses that they've spoken over their body mm -hmm. before they can receive physical healing. Yeah. I hate my nose. I hate my yeah. arm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, all those things. Yeah. <laughs> all, all that silly stuff. Yeah. yeah. Diet helps with parenting too. Yeah. You know, yeah. not feeding your kids sugar all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Behavior is, is a, is a huge thing uh -huh. and uh, it's, it's affected by a lot of different things. Yeah. Well, so, Leslie, it has been a pleasure uh, yes, talking to you tonight, and I'm, I don't know if we got through all the questions, but thankfully, we have mm -hmm. one more night with you next Tuesday. Yes. Yeah. Hey, I did you, have one, one more question. Do you, okay. do you think all believers should go through these steps of freedom? I think they used to in the New Testament, and so yes, I do. Yep. Yes. Yeah. I believe this used to be foundational. Mm -hmm. Um you know, in the New Testament liturgy, when we study the New Testament liturgy, they would, um, there's documented evidence of, of, they would go through discipleship before they were baptized. And when they were baptized, they would, as they were coming up out of the water, the elders would lay hands on them and cast out demons immediately. And I love to, I, I talk to pastors about it, you know, because what we love to do as ministers is we kind of picture ourselves in this war, war zone, right? And we, we go in like these special forces and we rescue the captives and we bring them back in our van in our ministry van, right? And yeah. then we dump them off in the church and we never minister to their, the fact that they're starved. We don't minister to the fact that they're malnourished. We don't clean up their wounds. We don't take off their chains. And then we wonder why they don't play nice with everyone else. Now you're just meddling. Yeah, I'm meddling, <laughs> yeah. But it's true. I mean, you know, we bring people into the kingdom and we feel so good about ourselves. We pat ourselves on the back, yeah. but we, we neglect. Oh, yeah. We neglect healing their wounds, yep. healing their hearts, healing their bodies, and attending, you know, setting them free and getting the chains off. And those are all things that Jesus did for us. Yes. Um, but, it, you know, it's all finished work that he's right. the one that accomplished. But he put the tools in our hands and said, you're my hands and feet, go do it. And so it's, it's our responsibility to appropriate the finished work of Christ yeah. to every single person who accepts him. And I really believe we would see a massive change in our churches if we were practicing this. And I know that in other areas of the world, especially in South America, they are doing this. And when they see, you know, they see these huge revivals and they're bringing in thousands of people and then 80% of those people are still in church a year later. And they're not just in church, but they're tithing and they're actively serving. And we're just like, what? We're used to 10%. Yeah. And it's, it's mainly because they're doing, you know, they're ministering the whole gospel, not just the salvation prayer. Mm. Yeah. That's good. So just getting them in the door and counting heads, that's not it? I don't think so. <laughs> I, don't think, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's that simple. <laughs> yep. We need discipleship. That's yeah. what we do. We do. So, yeah. You know, I, I was talking to my husband yesterday, and I was saying that, in a lot, and he has a huge heart for discipleship and mentorship. And, and I was telling him, you know, in the church in America, we've kind of replaced discipleship with counseling and life coaching. But it's not God's design. Right. God wanted us to go out and make disciples. Mm -hmm. And in the churches, we're meant to do that. Mm -hmm. And so it takes work, though. Yes, and, then, and if the yeah. church is doing it, then you've got community and you've going got on. Community, and, and, and it's, not just, it's yeah. not just meeting with a counselor. Now you've got... You've got the whole community yes. of the church coming together. So, yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's been a pleasure. And I think you've yes. answered uh, some good questions for people tonight yeah. on, uh, on this subject. We've talked about deliverance. We've talked about different things. Um, but we went a lot deeper into emotional healing tonight. Now, next Tuesday, we're going to talk a little more about the deliverance side. Yeah. Is yes. that... Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, all right. So that's going to be interesting. I've, I've seen all kinds of stuff. I have too. <laughs> I talk, have too. I have a unique perspective on deliverance though, and we'll talk about it next time. But yeah. yes, the Lord, the Lord really gave me um, the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons and daughters. 
of God. And so um, when it comes to deliverance, I love to come at it with a peacemaker authority yeah. and that breaker anointing. And so um, it's a unique perspective, but I've not found it to be less powerful. Okay. So um, yeah. I'm excited to share more about it. Good. Great. Well, would you, as we close tonight, would you just pray uh, that God would direct people to healing and and yeah. uh, we need we need this awakening to take place. Yes. Yeah. Um, Father God, I just thank you for your heart. Lord, your heart for your people. You're the Father that just stands at the road watching, calling people back, calling people back to their identity, just waiting to restore and redeem and heal and set free. And so, Lord, I just thank you for your heart. Jesus, we thank you for your finished work. You accomplished every single thing that we need to walk in this new life that you're calling us to. And it's, you get all the glory. You get all the glory. And so, Lord, we just praise you. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come. And I just ask that for every person who watches this, every person who hears, Lord, even in the, within our region, Lord, I just pray for your spirit to move that you would begin to move through this region and that you would breathe your breath of life over each of us, God, that we would, there would be, um, I just see as you move and you breathe life over people, that there would be people who are awakening to the call, Lord, that they would awaken to, to what you've called them to and that you've called them to life and to life to the fullest. And so, Jesus, I thank you for that. I thank you that you are the redeemer and the restorer and the healer and um, the one who sets captives and prisoners free. So, Jesus, I just pray for your hand to move. Um, I pray that you would unlock the healing anointing that you have spoken and released over this region. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord, that Lord. this region is going to be a place of refuge. Yeah. Yes. And that, Lord, is going to be a place for healing. And I just pray that you would un un unpack that and release it now in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we just ask for the angels, Lord. We, we partner with your servants that serve you and love you. And we welcome them into our region as ministering angels who, who minister with us, God. And so we just, we honor them for their role. And we thank you, Jesus, for all that you're doing in our hearts. And I just pray for your truth to be downloaded and just to um, unlock the doors of our heart, Lord, so that we can receive the hope that you've poured into it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Well, thank you. Thank you thank guys you. for watching. Those of you that was here tonight, thank you. And um, we'll yeah. look forward to next week. Sounds good. Thank you.